A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Whoa, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! It was just before sundown of a day in early spring when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up their horses near the bustling river town of Westport. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll stop here, Tonto. Right there, big fella. You ride on into town and buy some supplies. I'll make camp. Ah. Plenty people in Westport now. Better than not see you with mask. That's right. There are several wagon trains making up here. Homesteaders heading west. Uh, there's one thing me not savvy. What's that, Toto? Near the edge of town, me see big white teepee. Plenty people go in there. Listen to feller make talk. Oh, uh, you must mean the evangelist tent. It's fairly large, made of white canvas. Oh, me not understand evangelist. That means a preacher, Toto. Sort of a traveling parson. Uh, tents are about the only churches the pioneers have while they're on the trail. Oh. I don't know who this particular preacher is. I wish him luck. Westport's a boom town, so it's probably overrun with crooked gamblers and thieves. Ah. The honest people in those wagon trains need the help of whatever good work he can do. Well, get back as soon as you can, Tonto. I'll have a fire going. Be ready for supper. Ah. Get him up, scum! <laughs> A few minutes later, on the other side of Westport, two men stepped from the gangplank of a St. Louis river boat and walked toward the center of town. Both of the men were professional gamblers. Tall, dark complexion, Cole Webster, and his usual companion, a tow-headed young man known only as Cotton. Say, Cole, this town of Westport's really booming. Look at the people. Homesteaders. They make up their wagon trains here, then head west. Oh, clod hoppers, huh? Well, just the same, I bet they got plenty of money in their jeans. Maybe. Might not be a bad idea to set up a poker or a feral game. Oh, we could take a few dollars away from these yokels. No, they... Cotton, we're riverboat gamblers. We'll stick to it. I'd rather not get in on it. Well, anything you say, Cole. Seems a shame, though, with all this sucker money around here just waiting to be Evidently, taken. Evidently, someone else has the same idea. Look over there. Well, up. A shell game. Let's go over and see who's running it. It's strictly a game of skill, gents. 
A game to test that age-old question, which is quicker, the hand or the eye. Now you'll notice I have the halves of three ordinary walnut shells on the table before me. And beside the shells, one little black-eyed pea. That's all, just one little black-eyed pea. Hey, look at the yokel's Now, oh, watch me closely. Watch me. I put one of the Wait. shells over the pea like this. Then I move all three shells like this and this. Now all you have to do is tell me which shell is hiding the little black-eyed pea. Oh, the one I mean? That's all there is to it, folks. You bet your money you take your choice. It's a game of skill, folks, to determine which is quicker. My hand or your eye? <laughs> yes, I'll try it again, mister. Good. Here's a man who wants to prove that I'm wrong and he's right. How much, stranger? Well, I, uh, I've lost a couple of times. Have to double up to get even. Can I bet a hundred dollars? Certainly. Put your money on the table. Well, there we are. Now, watch the little black-eyed pea. First I cover it, then move the shells like this and this. All right, my friend, you tell me where I find the pea. Hey, keep track of it this time. It's under that shell on the end. On the end? Yes. Very well. Now the man says he's sure. So we'll turn over this shell and find... Oh. Nothing there. Yes, sir, that's a shame. You see, all the time, the little black-eyed pea was under this shell. Well... Sorry, my friend. Better luck next time. No, now, say, well, Cotton, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I just recognize this highbinder. It's Kit Murphy, one of Ace Craven's games. Kit Murphy? Murphy. Well, sure. Sure it is. That means that Ace Craven must have men all over. I don't know. But I'm sure Kit doesn't remember me. All right, anyway, I'm going to show him a few tricks with those shells. Come on, sure. Why, sure. Mind if I take a chance at your little guessing game? Why not? Put up your money, mister, and take your choice. All right. Here's a thousand dollars. That says I can... I... Did you say a thousand? It is. Don't you want to play? Well, I... Why, sure. I'll just put the little pea under one of these shells and move them like this and this. Now, can you guess which... It's under this one right here. What? what? No, that's impossible. You mean you have two little black-eyed peas? That proved the game's crooked. I'm sure you wouldn't want any. Well, you must have slipped another one under there when I wasn't looking. I won I... the game. Pay me. Well, I... All right. Here's your money. Thanks, Kit. Hey, what the... Cole Webster. Tell Ace Craven he'll go broke if all of his shell game operators are like you. A blind man can move faster than you do in this game. Double cross and tin horn. Give me back that money or I'll... You won't do anything, Murphy, except fold up that table and move on. It's crooked scum like you that give decent gamblers a bad name. You can't make me I said my... move. Yeah, that's the way to do it. All right. Wait till Ace hears about this. He'll fix you up. Yeah, sure. Cotton. Yeah. Follow Murphy. I want to find out where Ace is hiding. Sure, out. cool. I'll stay right behind him. Wonderful. I've been watching you all the time. Excuse me, ma'am. You certainly made that gambler pack up and leave in a hurry. Well, I... You see, my father preaches against gambling. He's holding meetings every afternoon and night in that big white tent at the edge of town. And now you... uh, I'm afraid you've got me wrong, ma'am. I I have a wonderful idea. You could help father in his work. Will you talk to him, will you please? What I've been trying to tell you is that I'm really no different than... Please come and have a talk with father, won't you? I... All right. Where's your pa's church? The big ten I told you about. Come on. Ho, ho, you critter, ho. Hey, sir. Hey, sir. What are you doing back here at the cabin? I thought I told you to keep working that shell game and Something so. happened. Cole Webster's here in Westport. Webster? What of it? Well, he came up and started to play. I didn't recognize him. He cleaned me, Ace. Took a thousand dollars every cent I had. Oh, you lame brain jughead. What's wrong with you? Letting a slick tin horn like Webster. What can I the... do with all the yokels standing around? I had to leave. I think he put that tow headed hombre cotton on my trail. What? You mean Oh, that... I'm sure I lost him about a quarter of a mile back. But the trail goes over the bluff. Ten to one, he gave up when he lost my sign. And it's an even bet he didn't. Uh, what? Yes. Head for town. Find Cole Webster and get rid of him. Sure. As if I didn't have enough trouble here in Westport with that psalm singing sky pilot yelling his head off about gambling without Cole you. Webster's a pretty tough hombre, yes. Not tough enough to move in on me. Did you deliver that card to the sky pilot this afternoon? Yeah. 
I went to his big pet meeting and dropped your little love letter into the collection place. <laughs> uh, just so he got it. Now, uh, get going. Run down Webster. Yeah, I'll handle him. You, Kit, get out of here and scour that back trail of yours. Find that toe-headed skunk named Cotton and leave him where you find him. Sammy? Oh, sure, Ace. I'd have drilled him before, Shut but up. I thought that... Get out of here and do what I say. Getting the supplies, Tonto? No, no trouble. Me get them from Saddlebag. Good. Plenty of people on the street in town. Oh. That makes Tonto walk well, slow and me see, see you, the. Huh? Well, you're dumb, Galoot. I tell you, couldn't that hide out Cameron Bay? Yeah, well, maybe you could, go ahead. But they're not trailing anybody from here. Somebody on the trail above us, Tonto. Ah. Oh! Look out, Tonto. Gunshot. Get some water quick. Huh. You do it. I got... No, you better lie still. So we find out how badly you're hurt. Yeah. Here, me bring water. Good. Bring out a cloth and put it on him. Yes. Yeah. You do it. Craven sent two of you to trail me. You have a pretty serious scalp wound here. You're lucky to be alive. It's a blanket, Todd. We can lie on that. Yeah. Where were you and Kit gun me? Right here. You fell off the trail into our camp. Yeah, just my luck. Do it by one ace's gun. is not falling out of hoot camp. We're not outlaws. There. Doesn't that feel any better? A bandage now. I can't figure this out. Well, don't try. Just lean back and rest. Oh, I can't stay here. They're after Cole. They sent a gunslinger into town to kill him. I was outside the cabin, heard him talk about it. Who's Cole? Cole Webster. The best faro dealer between here and St. Louis. We're partners. Now, rest for a few minutes until I can get this bandage fixed. Then you can tell us all about it. And don't worry. I don't know. I'll find some way to reach Cole Webster. <laughs> Big church tent. It's empty now because the evening service won't start until. Oh, Dad! Dad, oh, Dad, come here! Where are you, Carolyn? I brought someone to meet you. Sure. I, oh, I'm so stupid. I, I've forgotten to ask your name. This is my father, Mr. Gideon Bell, and, and you're. Webster. Cole Webster. And I'm Carolyn Bell. Carolyn Bell. Beautiful name. I'm glad to know you, young man. Thanks. You should have seen him, Dad, just a little while ago. Mr. Webster did what we've been trying to do for weeks. He made one of those cheating gamblers pack up and leave. Good. I, I'm afraid Miss Carolyn is sort of mixed up. All I did was beat one of Ace Craven's men at his own game, and I won a thousand dollars doing it. You won it? Well, I, I don't understand. Well, you see, I'm no reformer. I'm a gambler myself, rather notorious gambler. Oh. I hope you're joking, young man. Gamblers are the worst evil in the a civilized community. My daughter and I are doing our best to get rid of them. I see. I'll leave, and you can be sure one is gone. Why didn't you tell me you... I tried to. And uh, I'm sorry. Truly, I am. Surely, Mr. Webster, you must realize the error of your ways. This little time... I just arrived a few hours ago, Mr. Bell. As you know, honest gambling is perfectly legal, but there is crooked gambling going on here in Westport. But I have no part in it. Nobody hates a crooked gambler worse than I do. If you are sincere in that statement, won't you lend your strength and prayers to help us wipe out the evil? Oh, yes. Please do. Won't you call? It'll take a lot more than prayer to beat this setup. The only way to whip a crooked gambler is with lead. Prayer is stronger than bullets. And I'm sure that the hidden hand of truth is always on the side of righteousness. Maybe so. But gamblers are pretty smart at playing hidden hands themselves. I don't care what devices gamblers use. I know truth will eventually win out. I, to use one of your professional terms, Mr. Webster, I'll bet I'm right. I'll take that bet, Mr. Bell. What's more, I... Ah! What? Behind you, a man with a gun. This is the payoff, Cole. In lead. I'm drawing cards in this game. Drop that gun. Look. On the other side, the mayor's staff law. And we're in the middle. Down. Both of you down. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. In the uncertain darkness, just inside Gideon Bell's large tent, the Lone Ranger traded lead with a killer. Oh, come on. Stay down, Carolyn. The men on that side was going to kill you. Yeah. I don't know why the master outlaw dealt himself in, but he can sure sling lead. Oh, I'm hit. I... Oh, is he dead? No such luck. He's getting away. Look. Are you people all right? Yes, by the grace of heaven. Good. That gunslinger was after me. Thanks to you, he hightailed it. Why did you come oh, in on this? You are wearing a mask. You must be an outlaw. Forget the mask. You're uh, Cole Webster, aren't you? Yeah, but... I'll who... try to trail the man who was trying to kill you. In the meantime, you ought to know that a friend of yours has had an accident. A friend of mine? Yes, he's smaller than you, toe-headed, Cotton. and I... I sent him to trail Kit Murphy. You'll find him in a small camp under a bluff about a mile downriver. Thanks. I'll see you later. Adios. <laughs> You two Jaspers call yourselves gunslingers. Fumbled both jobs. What do you mean, fumbled? I plugged the towhead, didn't I? How do I know? Well, listen, Ace. It wasn't my fault if some owl who'd wearing a mask moves into side Cole Webster in that sky pilot. Yeah, a masked outlaw. You come back here with a loco story you dreamed up about something. Slugging my shoulder's no dream. I tell you, he was a big army that Shut up. Handle... From now on, when I want a job done right, I'll do it myself. First, that preacher yelling about forming a citizens' committee to run us all out of town. Now, Cole Webster moves Jeez. in and tries... I just thought of something. Well, it's news to me that you can think. If the preacher gent won't scare, there's one way to get to him and Cole Webster at the same time. All right, I'm listening. The old coot's got a daughter, ain't he? I think that's where Cole Webster ties in. Yeah, he's sweet and quiet. Quiet. I'll work it out myself. And we'll try again. See if you jugheads can follow orders this time. Oh, who's the one? Who's the guy? Who's the one? Where are the cotton directions, Toto? We should pick up the trail to Ace Craven's hideout here on top of the bluff. Ah, no trail sign here. You're not savvy. Must be somewhere nearby. Pretty big fella. Easy. Ground hits the horses here and see what luck we have on foot. Uh -uh. Can't be too far from here. We'll keep on searching until we find it, though. Are you sure you feel all right, Cotton? Well enough to walk back to town? Here, lean on my arm. Oh, I'm all right, Cole. Well, it just creased my scalp, that's all. After that mask, Jim, and the redskin bandaged it for me, I... I wonder who he is, that outlaw with the mask. Oh, blame the fine old. I sort of fell into the camp, like I told you. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> but right now, you and I have got something else to worry about. Yeah? What is it? We're going to help Gideon Bell run Ace Craven and his gang out of Westport. Gideon Bell? Listen, Cole, you're not getting religion, are you? Of course not. Religion's got nothing to do with it. I just want to help Mr. Bell give honest folks a square deal. That's all. Yeah. Cool. You and I have been working together, dealing games on the river boats for a long time. That's right. You're not going to break up and go solo on me, are you? <laughs> you loco. Of course I'm not. You and I are more than business partners, Cotton. We're friends. We'll always be friends. And as soon as we help this preacher gent get rid of Ace Craven, we'll go back to the boats and everything will be just like it was before? Sure, sure. And another thing. I want to win a bet I made with the preacher. And now, my friends, I've come to the most important part of my message for this evening. I've warned you of this evil before. And I bring that same warning again. Crooked, dishonest, and thieving gamblers are robbing every gullible man in town. Most of us are only temporary citizens of Westport. We're waiting here till the wagon trains leave for the West. In the meantime, are we going to allow crooked gamblers to sap our strength and undermine our courage? I say no. Gideon's right, folks. Let's clean up Westport and keep it clean. Right. Right. Are you sure you know where the 
sky piloters camp? Sure. Him and the girl live in one of these covered wagons. I think it's this one. You think? Well, why not sing out, Ace? That'll rouse somebody. Yeah, I'll try. Hello! The wagon! Are you looking for someone? That's her, Ace. Yes, I'd like to see Gideon Bell if he's around. He told the service was down at the big tent. Oh, why don't you... Are you, you sure go... this is her, love? Yeah. Oh, who are you, man? I, I can't see your faces very well in this light. You're coming with us, sister. Oh, no. The blanket kit, throw it over her head. Yeah. Now, love, you deliver the message. Chip and I can handle her. <laughs> Our prayers with a strong arm of truth. Show the gamblers we mean business. That's Mr. Belcott. How do you like it? Uh, first rate. Sounds like it really means it. It does. Furthermore, my friends, I'm happy to tell you I've enlisted the aid. Excuse me, please. What's the matter? Why did he stop talking? I don't know. Boy just walked up and handed him a slip of paper. I... Something's wrong, Cotton. Come on. Sure. Mr. Bell, my friend and I have been listening oh, to your talk. Webster, I'm glad to see you, sir. This is the kind of attack I didn't expect. What are you talking about? This card was just handed to me. It's a note. I'll read it to you. It says, your daughter is with us. If you want to save her life, get out of town. Carolyn, you if mean... this message is authentic, I... I don't know what to do. He's craving that dirty sneaking. Cotton, can you find your way back to that hideout of theirs? Well, I think I can, Cole. We've got to find it. Do it mighty quick. Come on. That must be the cabin up ahead, Tonto. With a light in it. Ah. No wonder we've had a hard time finding it. The place is almost completely hidden by underbrush. No, wait, Tom. Someone coming. Let them pass. They can't see us. Uh -huh. There's a light burning, so they must be holed up. That's all I want to know. Keep your gun handy. Don't worry. That lobo Kit Murphy won't do me a second. Uh, Kim and Slappy. Yes. That young fellow we leave in camp. Yes. And the other man's Cole Webster. Something must have happened in town to make them pick up this trail and come. Uh, what do we do, Kim and Slappy? We'll circle the cabin, Toto. Come up from the rear. I'd uh, rather let Webster and his friend handle this job, but they may need some help. That's Carolyn. They brought her out here and... Betty Cotton. You stand back, cool. I'm going to take a run at that door. <laughs> hey, what? Oh. Hey, the toe hit. You have your club. Reach, both of you. Behind the door, watch out, Cole! Cotton, you're hurt. Hold your fire, Hunk. This Webster tin horn might be worth more to us alive. Drop your gun, Cole. Lop's got you covered. Hey. You heard what he said? Drop it. All right. I should have figured on another rat behind the door. I won't make the same mistake again. Don't get the chance. Now listen to me, Tin Horn. The first thing I want is the money you took away from Kit. Then Loppel heard you and the towhead back to town. You get a hold of the Medlin Sky Pilot. The three of you will make tracks and fast. You understand? You dirty murder and coyote. Oh, wait, uh, second thought, it's not worth it. What do you mean, Ace? Webster and the towhead are more trouble than they're worth. Drill them, Loppel. No! You're even afraid to do your own killings, aren't you, Ace? You cheap little... Lop, I said plug him. All right, I'll get it. No, you won't. Oh, hey, Ace, look. The window. There's a masked man. He's going to shoot. No. Oh, you all right, Webster? Yes, I guess I am. At least none of those bullets touched me. I'm afraid cotton's No, hurt. I'm not cool. They winged me again, but I'll live through it. Good. If I were you, Webster, I'd turn all three of these crooked gamblers over to the law in Westport for attempted murder. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, about the future, Webster... Although legitimate gambling is legal here on the frontier, I don't approve of it. Don't you think... I understand, mask man. Good. Adios. Now, wait a minute. You can't just walk away without... 
Oh. Carolyn, you all right? These three skunks didn't hurt you, did they? No, of course not. I... Just a little bit shaky and scared, that's all. I don't blame you. If it hadn't been for that masked man breaking in just when he did, I don't he think... He broke the window with his hand, Cole. Maybe that was the hidden hand of truth that Dad's always talking about. Maybe so. Whatever it was, it saved our lives. All right, you skunks. We're walking back to town. Get a move on. I sure hate to see you go, Cotton. Wish you'd change your mind and come out west with us. So do I. There's plenty of room in our wagon. Oh, no. I'd be like a fish out of water if I ever left these river boats for very long. You two go ahead. The trip will make a fine honeymoon. Cotton, you're sure there's no hard feelings about... Well, about me changing my mind? I <laughs> know, Cole. If I ever find a girl as pretty as Caroline, I'll change my mind, too. <laughs> oh, Cotton. <laughs> well, that's it. We're shoving off. So long, Cole. Bye, Cotton. Goodbye, Caroline. Give our regards to your pa. Goodbye. Well, who'd ever figure the whole thing would turn out this way? Cole wins a girl, Gideon Bell wins a bet, and I'm the only one that knows the hidden hand of truth belonged to the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.